Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, today is Friday, praise God. And I've always told you, take the weekends to listen to this broadcast from Monday to Friday. You need to listen to it again. Listening once may not do the job. You need to listen again and again praise god yeah and and i trust the spirit of god that he's doing a lot in your life we've been talking about the blessings of abraham and i know you're learning from this and not only learning we are preparing you for god's visitation god says i'm coming to visit for this purpose praise god before we go into today's broadcast can we call forth our daily bread can we demand for it it's yours so release your faith right now like someone who's asking your father for something that he's promised you <laughs> not begging him but demanding out of his integrity are you ready join me right now say father i demand now my daily bread it's coming to me in jesus name Amen. Praise God. Receive a miracle today. Receive it is yours. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now I want to show you. We, we, we're talking about the Abrahamic blessing. And yesterday I, I showed you what God is thinking about. He's thinking about every family on the face of the earth that will be a blessing to them. See, he wants he wants all the families of the earth to receive him as to receive his welfare. He wants to take care of every family in the earth. Praise God. Now then, so I want to show you something. Let's go to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 20. And verse 32. I want you to follow me closely now. It says, So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of His grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Now, this was Apostle Paul. He had called for the elders in Ephesus and he finished having a meeting with them and then he began to pray for them and bless them. So he said, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. Take note of that. I commend you to God and to the word specifically. I am commending you to his, the word of his grace. I'm commending you to God. And specifically, I'm commending you to the word of his grace. Now notice, he now uses a which. He didn't say who. He says which is able to build you up. So what's he referring to? Did he make a mistake of referring to God as which? No, praise God. He was referring to the word of his grace. Now, what does it mean, the word of his grace? Take note of that. Put that somewhere in your mind. Now, he goes on to say, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. So, if I commend you to God and then there is something about God, there is the word of his grace. The word of God's grace has the ability to build you up. And then when, he be, when it builds you up, it gives you an inheritance among a special people. Who are the special people? He said the sanctified ones. So who are the sanctified ones? <laughs> it's good. Okay, so the target of this commendation is that the people he was referring to receive an inheritance among some special people who are sanctified. So who are the sanctified people who sanctified them? How did they get sanctified? 
Now, let's, let's look at John chapter 17. We'll do a bit of Bible study today. Praise God. John chapter 17 and verse 17. This is Jesus praying to God. And, and he's talking to the Lord. He, he's, uh, you know, I call this John chapter 17, the holiest chapter of the Bible. Praise <laughs> God. Yeah, because this is Jesus not praying for because of it. He's talking to the Father heart to heart. And then he comes here in verse 17, John chapter 17. He says, sanctify them. He was praying for us. You remember at some point he said, I'm not praying for these ones. In verse 20 he says, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. So he was praying for you too. He was praying for all of us. So now he says, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Mm sanctify them by your truth your word is truth so he is actually saying sanctify them by your word sanctify them by your word so jesus here was acknowledging that god is the one who sanctifies and we are the ones to be sanctified are you following me? And then Jesus here gives us the picture of how God sanctifies. And how does he sanctify? He sanctifies by his word. Not just his word, his word of truth. See? So he didn't just say shit, sanctify them by your truth, by your word. He says, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. So truth is in his word. Of course, he cannot lie. Praise God. So truth is in his word. So there is the word of truth that brings sanctification. What does it mean sanctification? Setting apart. Setting apart. So his word of truth begins to come and then he begins to set you apart. Are you seeing that now? So now when he says, when Paul says, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. Now the word of his grace actually is the same thing as saying the word of his truth. Say how? John chapter 1. Look at it. John chapter 1 and verse 14. Watch this now. It says, then the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth so the word was full of what grace and truth now sometimes you've heard believers say jesus is our sanctification now when he says jesus this is what we're referring to because we saw the word come, become flesh and he dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. What did we behold in his glory? He was full of grace and truth. Now, we go back to what Paul says. He says, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. Now, you see, the word is full of grace and truth. Now, that's the word that brings about sanctification. Are you following me? So, now... He says, that word of sanctification, which is the word of grace, which is the word of truth, is able to build you up. The first thing, the word of truth, which sanctifies you, does in your life, is to build you up. Now, when it builds you up, first, builds you up and then gives you an inheritance. Now you see that building up part is the part that many people miss. Mm. I want to show you something in mm -hmm. John chapter 8 and verse 31. John 8, 31. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believe in him, 
if you con if you abide in my word old king james said if you continue in my word abide in my word means stay in my word if you stay in my word watch this you are my disciples indeed and you shall know the truth what does it mean you shall know the truth you shall know the word of truth now Jesus is the one speaking here and he's letting you know that you don't know truth from day one you don't know truth from the day you come to him you've got to abide stay continue to dwell in that word that environment of his word you stay and then when you stay he says you are proving that you're his disciple and then what happens then you will know the truth he didn't say who will tell you the truth because it's God that will make you know the truth. The truth will come to you. He says you will know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Now what's he talking about? He's still talking about his this sanctification here. It's because now you keep abiding. When you're abiding, what do you think is going on? He's building you up. He's building you. He's taking out the things that are not, ought not to be in you from you. He's adding the things that you need to have in you. He begins to do all this work inside of you. What do you think is going on? He's sanctifying you. And in the process of this sanctification, he builds you up. Then you qualify for something that he gives to all those who are sanctified. What does he give to them? There is an inheritance that he puts in their hands. Now you understand when God begins to say, I will bless you. I will make your name great. I will make you a blessing. Now, what's he saying? He didn't say, you know, it's one thing for God to say, you will be great. You will be this. But when God says, I will, it's different. If God says, you will be something, it doesn't mean he's the one that will make you. You see, that, that's one thing people miss when, when, when they listen to prophecies. Understand when God says, I will do something. And from when God says, something will happen. Now, when God says something will happen, it doesn't mean he's the one that will do it. See, events can cause that thing to occur. But when God says, I will, then go sleep. Leave it to him. And of course, he can't do anything that is evil. Are you following me? So when God says to you, I will make you. Mm. Don't try to make yourself. Learn to abide, follow, then see him lead you into that. Because sometimes God says, I will, I will make you. I will make you the CEO. Okay. You know, start. Ah, I know. I know my I know my vision now is to become the CEO. Begin to plot your way, plot your way, plot your way. I told you yesterday, those things will make God take his hands off. God says, I will make you relax. Follow. Follow him step by step. Step by step. He's the one that will tell you, go right, you go right. Tell the turn left, you turn left. Now I'll tell you one funny thing about walking with the Lord. Most times, you know, he will lead you to the place that you don't know really. He's not going to lead you to the path that you're used to. He will lead you to the path that you don't know. And that's why I told you, it's got to be by faith. You've got to trust Him. You see that now? Now, why is He doing that? He's sanctifying you. He's setting you apart. He's separating you from the rest. So you see other people do things and, and it seems nothing happens to them, but you can't try. You want to try, you tell it, don't dare. Uh, but everybody... Uh, not you. What's going on? You are being sanctified. You are being set apart. Now, every true child of God, every true child of God must be sanctified. And it's not a confessional thing. You don't wake up and say, I'm sanctified in the name of Jesus. I'm desanctified. No, 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 brothers and sisters. It is a process. What kind of process is it? He begins to use his word to separate you. He begins to use his word. Now, you, everybody's traveling. Oh, wow, we're traveling. And then while they are all packing their bags, you hear him say, you're not going on that trip with them. Hmm? Yeah. 
You remember Jesus, they were all going for the feast. His, his brothers were like, come on now, let's go now, aren't you going for the feast? Go show yourself then. Because uh -uh. they go to the feast family by family. But the Lord had told Jesus, you're not going. You're not going with them. Mm, okay. He said, no, you guys go. I'm not coming. Ah, why are you not coming? I'll just go. They left. And when they were done, when they were gone, I said, now you can go. Oh, okay. Thank you, sir. Let's <laughs> go. And then he got there. Now he knows that he's not going there like every other person. He's going there with a word from the Lord. Mm. So the feast was going on. They were in the temple and, and doing all those stuff they do in the temple, greeting everybody, worshiping like they do. And suddenly they heard a voice from one corner. If any man thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Who's the I can imagine James. I can imagine Jude. No, then they were not believers. <laughs> I, I can imagine they thought, James, like, is that not G JJ? It sounds like it's, but he didn't come now. Then I turned and he's the one. I, I thought he said he was not coming. See now, see, he has come to show himself. Can you imagine? But he had to declare what God had put in his mind. Now that was the sanctification. God, you can't, you can't do things with everybody. And not because you are struggling to be different. No, it is the word of truth that begins to separate you. That is how sanctification happens. The word of truth begins to separate you. The word of truth begins to separate you. You like this thing. Okay, you want to. He said, no, you can't. Don't go that way. The word of truth keeps separating you. This is how sanctification happens. And that's what God was doing with Abraham. By his word, he began to separate him. By his word, he began to set him apart. By his word, and we're going to go into this next week. But I thought to introduce you to this aspect of the blessing of Abraham. You will not carry the blessing of Abraham until he sanctifies you. And our time is up. Praise God. Father, I bless everyone. Sanctification is taking place in our lives right now. You are sanctifying us that we indeed will become the fulfillment of the blessing of Abraham. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I declare over your life, this is going to be the greatest weekend you have ever experienced in Jesus' name. God bless you. I'll see you on Monday. Bye.